I am a chess with Fano. I am a chess with Fano. We will we lose together. We are as we fall together. I am a chess with Fano. I am a chess with Fano. We will we lose together. We are as we fall together. I am a Jesse Fano. I am a Jesse Fano. We will be lost together. We are as we fall together. Together we overcome. Together we can be stopped. Konitile koro oladara. We will reach those goals we set together. I am a Jesse Fano. I am a Jesse Fano. We will we lose together. We rise, we fall together. Oh. I am a Jesse Fano. <laughs> big up guys, big up. Made it, I made it, I'm just back. Fuck it. Coffee, let's go. <laughs> right, I've not watched Lucy's stream. I watched I watched a little bit back in the car there, so <clears throat> I'm not really up to date with the news. I watched a bit at the start for the half hour I was travelling. So I'm up to date with the news. There doesn't seem to be a lot of stuff happened apart from some of the nonsense I thought was nonsense was nonsense, this Brennan Johnston guy, whatever his name is, I didn't even bothered learning his name, because Ken what, I don't care, he's probably rubbish anyway, and I've no idea who he is, so whatever it is. You'll be glad to know, I passed my course, so the last three days, uh, I'm doing a course, passed it, so happy days, Mitchy boy on the up, everyone's on the up guys. Big up Frogger says Mickey Droy boy, good to see you in pal. <laughs> I know you're watching Johnny last night. I ain't what you guys, I don't watch Johnny anymore, but if anybody any of you people there can like fill me in what the gist it is to save me watching two hour streams, you know, just tell me what he was talking about and stuff like that. I would appreciate it. Save me wasting two hours of my life. Uh Philippe Courtois, good to see you in here again, pal. Hey, we lose, we win together. It's cool, guys. It's cool. Big up, Mickey. Draw you a big, big up to you, pal. You're still the manager. United, we stand. We die, divided, we nothing. Yeah, I, I don't know the words to it, but I'm, I'm starting to get better. To that was a daft cat getting in. See, always, always forty bombs a cat, eh? There you go. That. Hopefully, she'll sit up there now, out the road. Right, so. Because I'm in at the first to get me settled down a little bit, we'll talk through the team of the week. Because I never made one up the other day, I just used an old one. So today we've got a new one. So you can see, is there some changes to that? Is that the new one? I think it is. Well, we'll go with it anyway. <sighs> we've got Mickey Dry Boys manager. He's been doing a good job. You know, he, he came in right at the end last night, you know, obviously he came off of Johnny's and showed face, which is awesome, pal. Because I'd hate to drop you as manager, you know what I mean? Because you're an important guy to me. And definite and goal, he was on the stream last night, part of the panel. Bobby Smokes, uh, he was he's at the back, he was on the panel last night. Grant Ross has been in the chat quite a few times lately. So big up to you, Grant Ross. Coomber, who was on the panel last night, big up Coomber. Coomber will definitely not be coming on the night because I think he's doing things with his wife or whatever. Okay, so Nick Coomber the night, guys. Uh, Tony Tiger, you'll need to come on again, pal. You're a good panelist. I like speaking to you as well. Tony Tiger at left back. Chelsea Boy, one, two, three, four. Jacob Huggins and Goddy Frogs in the middle, eh? Goddy Frogs, my Scottish brother. Uh, you've got another Scottish brother as well now. His name's Stu, and I've put him up front. So this is the new one because I've put Stu up front on the left. You've got Gabriel on the right, and you've got Doom at the front because Doom's mental. Uh, the clown owners are always on the menu 
Oh, the clown owners are always on the menu at a a Minerals FC. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's just the same thing. Everyone's coming for the perspective of the owners are idiots, basically. That's the crux of it. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it, love. I, you, you, uh, I, I'm not a false guy. I tell, if I like you, I tell you. If I didn't like you, I sort of try and ignore you. <laughs> That's how I roll. Uh, let's get rid of this. Well, I'm stuck. All right, I need to get rid of that. Right, guys. So people are invited on the panel tonight. Uh, what usually happens is one night everybody in their granny comes on and then the next night nobody comes on and I have to waffle for tours. So we'll see how it goes tonight, guys. Eh? I know Coomber's definitely not coming, but we'll see who else comes on. Right, and Goddy Frogs, owners are mugs, facts. <laughs> I know, but you guys are getting brainwashed watching that for tours every night, you know what I mean? I, I've got different perspectives on things, so I might agree with some of the stuff that gets said, but I also might have another alternative point of view, and I think people should be allowed that point of view. It's just the way I am. Uh, I went down the rabbit hole with you guys for a while, but... I've, I'll always have my own views. I, can't, I need to move this, actually. I'm having to move my head. There we go, guys. That's better. I must have moved my camera and it's in the road of the, the chat. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, Mickey Droid Boys. Frogger got elite mentality. He knows the apple core. <laughs> this is the best of it. I mean, Frogs was like your king wronging. Him and Sean Newlands were the bad boys. Now he's right in with you boys, eh? He's one of the minerals uh, ultras. What do you think? It wasn't that long ago he couldn't even speak in the chat. He'll be getting moderated soon. What do you think, uh, what do you think Mickey Dry Boy? He'll be getting moderated soon. Bill Cosby FC under Todd Bundy Bully. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's why I, I like having you about the place, Goddy Frogs, because you always make me laugh, pal. You always make me laugh. <laughs> yeah, opinions are like bum holes. Everybody has one. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes they stink as well. <laughs> Which I think make it right, boy. Aye, uh, it's cool, man. Uh, obviously, subscribe, all that nonsense. You can read that. I'll no bother blaring that out. Right, we're going to actually talking about football. Which I think I've got no slides there. Fucking hell. Right, I've got notes, but I've got no slides. Oh my god. It's okay, I've got notes, so I can blather nonsense, okay? The thing is, last night is five panellists on, they could hardly get a word in, because everybody, uh, none of them gave, like, two-second answers, eh? <laughs> so it was like a three-hour stream, and everybody was having to, sort of, like, fight to talk and stuff. So night, I'm on my own, I'll just have to crack on with it. Right, guys, you want to pick a team for looting? Now, the only thing, the only caveat I've got to pick in a team at the moment is there's this rumour about Mujic not not being in training and stuff like that. And I don't know if Lavia was in training with the team as well. There's some sort of little rumours about these two guys. So they, they, guys, they guys might be, uh, they might be doubtful, but we don't know for sure. It could be anything. There was also a fake report that Mujic was on a flight to Madrid and it was a, it was just a fake news because it was an old picture or something. <laughs> Goddy frogs, Bobby out waffles you, Mitch. What do you mean, Bobby? They all out waffle me. I've got to fight to get in, man. It's like a battle. It's like fucking gladiators. <laughs> Oh my God! I'll tell you what though. They, they all talk sense. They all give good, solid points of view, and they're worth listening to. But I, I just worry about them all getting to get a wee shot, you know. So I try and keep it moving around the panel. But it's all good stuff. Like no, nobody really talks nonsense. I think, I, I think I'm more inclined to talk nonsense than they guys. Eh? I've got a bit, I've got a bit more nonsense about me than they guys. <sighs> ah, the coffee, the coffee's helping. I'm absolutely shattered, but we'll just rattle through it anyway. Uh, if everybody thought the same, we might as well be robots. That's the thing, Mickey Joy Boy. People can come in here with a, a different point of view now, and I'll accept that point of view, and I'll let them talk, and then I'll give my point of view and we move on. See, in the past, I would have been growling at somebody uh, if they had the different point of view of me. So I've grown, you know, I've changed, and I've only, like, changed in about the last... It's probably the last nine months or something. I've changed over that period. Because I, I, was, I was, like, adamant that you couldn't slag off players and things like that. But I've changed. 
So people can change, that's the thing. And I'm quite old, so old people can change. If I can change, uh, everybody can change. Like at Goddy Frogs, he's actually changing into a bad person, see a good person, <laughs> which I think. <laughs> to be fair, me going against the owners was more when they refused to fire Potter. That and that January spending spree. Yeah, it's fine with people wanting to back the owners, but I think some are doing it blindly. Yeah, that's the problem, buddy. I think you, I think you guys have hit the crux of the matter, right? Don't blindly follow a player if if their form dips and all that. We can have discussions about that, and we do on this channel. So if 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 Sterling's been shit all season, he's been shit all season. He played well the other day. He played well. We're knowing the mud because he played well. I wanted him to play well all last season. I wanted the whole team to play well last season, but they didn't. It was awful. And that was probably due to a lot of factors, but certainly Jellyfish Potter was a part of that. Plus, these owners, like you say, you guys, it's like, I'm not saying the owners are perfect. I can see they've got a vision, and there's a lot of things that they do well, but they're making a lot of mistakes as well. Because I've now gave uh, Pochettino, they're flinging a lot of boys at him and not a lot of experience. And we're going into one of the, well, probably the toughest league in the world with a lot of wee boys and with very little top flight experience. Plus a lot of them are coming to the, the English Premier League as well. They're coming from other countries where they've not played much football. So it all compounds, right? And, and what happens is the other day it broke down a little bit. I think Poch is a really good manager, but he's not really getting the tools to do the job. The tools might be good in the future. They might, he might develop the team, but he's only got a two-year contract or something like that. He's, he's not got a long, long contract, so he's got to earn He's got to earn his next contract, and that's what I hope he does. I hope Poch earns his next contract. He gets this team absolutely balling. He develops every player or tries to develop them. And if players like Sterling, they can't turn them round, we get rid of them. But he's turned Sterling round, so I didn't want rid of Sterling anymore because i seen a fantastic player the other day. So I'm not bothered about Sterling. So Sterling gets that place in the team, but he has to play like that. That's the thing. We're not just going to play him because, of the, oh, he's got titles at Man City. Who gives a fuck if he's got titles at Man City? I don't care. It's only what he does in the part for Chelsea, and he was shit. And he wasn't just... Shit as in like, you know, somebody who says something shit and then there's nothing in it. He, he was very, very poor on every aspect, eh, pretty much everything. He didn't work hard. He couldn't retain the ball. He wasn't getting by people. You know, every metric you can think of, he wasn't very good. And then look at him yesterday. And Liverpool improved as well. So Liverpool improved a bit. It gave him a pass mark. But yesterday... He was really good. Now, fair enough, the end products maybe know there sometimes and stuff like that, but it was sometimes. You know, that ball he played back and two people missed it and then Chile passed it back to the goalkeeper. He created a great chance there and we just never took that chance. So he should have had some sort of assist there, but he never got it. So he did his job, but we need people to score goals. And that's one of the questions I asked la last night in the panel. And if we get a panel in the night, we'll ask him again. Where's our goals going to come from? Because I still can't see where our goals are going to come from. It's okay doing it against Wrexham in a pre-season friendly, but it's different uh, when you play in the Premier League. And the other thing as well, we had a lot of wee boys playing all the time. The wee boys aren't even getting, like, guys like Matson who balled out on pre-season, he's not getting a game. Santos, who played a lot of the games in pre-season, did a lot of minutes, he's not getting a game. So we're bringing in different players again. So it's not really working at the moment, but hopefully, who's the next one we play? Luton? Luton, I want a positive result. I want a step in the right direction. That's what I'm wanting. That's all I'm asking for. Uh, we have to win the game. 1-0 will do me. 2-1 will do whatever it is, but just win that game. And that will help the guys settle in. That will give us a bit of confidence. We'll start getting a bit of momentum. And that's all I'm asking, you know. We don't... Uh, I want top five, right? I want Champions League next season because it makes sense. If we get Champions League, it helps everything, you know? And we don't want a Tuesday and Wednesday nights, you know? We don't want to be watching Celtic or fucking Man United or whatever, all playing the Champions League. We, we want to be in the nights. You now, I'll be working the nights a lot of the time anyway, so it's no selfish point of view. It's just that is good for the, you know, the club as a whole, how we're perceived around the world. It all makes a difference, market and things like that. So we've talked about these things anyway, but that's what it is. The whole package 
You need to be seen as an elite team because a lot of the fans talk about being an elite team, but we'll not be an elite team if we're not in the Champions League. My opinion, anyway. We need to get Champions League. Right, let's go into the chat. Uh, Mickey Droy boy, I couldn't slag off any players to be honest, even the ones that left. I squarely blame Clear Lake for mostly everything. There's been a lot of mistakes, Mickey Droy boy, uh, but you can also see they've did a lot of things right, and obviously for the future, the way they're structuring the club with the, the cutting the wage bills and stuff like that, we, we would all make different decisions. And even though I'm no I'm no backing the owners and things like that, but. Uh, I wouldn't have let Mount go. I would have signed them up. You, you guys know that. But they've done it. And if they're going to, the only thing I'll say is if they're going to have this hundred grand a week with incentives and all that, stick to it. Do, do, do not bring in a Felix on two hundred and fifty grand a week, three hundred grand a week, because then there's no point in getting rid of like a Mount or a Kai Havertz because you, you're just, you know, it's pointless. So if we're going to stick to this model, stick to this model. I, the other thing I'll caveat all this with as well is I don't know if it's going to work. Are, are we going to bring in a young team and young guys who know a lot of experience and we actually compete with teams who are fully experienced players, you know, big, strong men, and, and we're putting like young players against it. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if the team we're putting on the park is going to get us top five. But I, that's what I want, and I can see the talent in these players. But, but you've got to remember as well, uh, teams in the past, maybe a Barcelona, maybe the Spanish team and things like that, they were small guys, but they were skillful, and they played teams off the park. So maybe we don't need the big donkeys all over the place. Maybe we can do it with more athletic, skillful players. So that's all down to Pochettino. And the only thing I'll say about Pochettino, it's not even about the owners, he needs to be a bit more positive for his team selection. I, d I don't want to see Chile playing as like a left winger. I want to see a left winger playing as a left winger. Because, see, if you take on men and get by men with space, like Sterling did the other day, it creates havoc and it creates space. Whereas if you've got these past sideways merchants like Chilwell, the ball's not going to get progressed forward enough. I mean, he he is a threat sometimes and stuff like that, but is that enough to get us a lot of goals during the season? I don't think it is. Uh, because we were 12 last season, we had some of these boys in the team, we're just not going to score enough goals. The biggest thing about Poch is he needs a solution to get us goals. Everybody thinks we're going to get this magical striker in and everything's going to be fixed. You know, oh, we'll get awesome in and everything's fixed. It might not be that simple, guys. It can be general play, it can be creating chances, because a lot of the criticism of Mount and Havertz was they weren't creating chances and stuff like that. So if we're going to bring in other players, they have to be better and they have to create more chances, or it's just the same thing. So you're getting rid of players, bringing other players in, and you're taking a big risk and they're not any better. So the players have to be better. Right, I'll, I'll just go through the chat because it's a bit busy. Goddy Frogs changed the entire squad and Vertit is still out. If that's good or not, they've done portional favours with these massive changes. Exactly. You can't have a change like that and expect it to be hunky-dory. And it's obviously no hunky-dory. I think we got away with it in the first match because we'd, we were just sort of solid against Liverpool and we got the draw. Now, we could have won that game, but we could have lost it. Uh, I, I get that game we just played we could have won that game if we took certain chances if we would have given away a penalty it's a lot of ifs and buts but we got beat 3-1 so we've seen this over the seasons we, we're prone to get beat 4-1 by teams that are no rated we've been doing it for quite a few seasons there's this soft underbelly so we're changing some of the players but we're still getting the same results it's like the other team just goes up the park and we lose a goal you know, and that's been happening for a while, for what I can remember. And even with changing the players, same same things happening. It's this three at the back. I think it's it doesn't work. I think you need two people to take responsibility, defend properly, instead of having three people at the back and nobody really takes responsibility. And you know, you lose the goal anyway. Mickey Dryboy 